Hello and welcome to The Pup Mommy. This is a channel where I share my practical hands-on experience, including my mistakes, in the 30 years or over 30 years that I've owned, loved, and cared for dogs. Did you know that six out of 10 dogs adopted are returned? It's true. And also 60% of dogs who are adopted have a different owner within six months of their adoption if they're not returned. And I'm trying to break that cycle of return and adopt, return, adopt, return by helping people find the right dog that fits their lifestyle and their personality. And if you would like to learn more about my services and the packages available, I'll leave a link to the... Uh... So in this video, I'm going to be talking about dogs that are not necessarily the right breed for first-time dog owners or people who, let's say, have had dogs in their life earlier and now 15, 20, 25 years later, they want to adopt a dog into their home for themselves or their family. But there are certain dog breeds out there that are not necessarily the right dog, especially for first-time dog owners. Now, let me say this first of all. Every single breed that I mention in this video can be a wonderful, is a wonderful dog, can be a wonderful family dog. But there's a difference between people like me who are very experienced in dog owners as in terms of everything from veterinary care to grooming to training to living with dogs on a daily basis, understanding their activity levels and so forth. And being a first time dog owner where you really want to get this right, but at the same time, you don't want the dog to overwhelm you. So here's my list of criteria when in terms of coming up with this listing of dogs for you. Let's, so let's get started and I'll, I'll give you my listing of dogs. And in some cases, I kind of group them together because they have certain characteristics. So the first grouping of dogs that I don't necessarily think are good for a first time dog owner include the Australian cattle dog, which I'm seeing quite a few more in shelters these days. To me, that's not surprising. The Australian shepherd and the border collie. Now, you may see a lot of these dogs in different websites. Border Collie is, you see especially in agility. But if you ever, if you ever watch these agility films, always Border Collies. But what do these three dogs have in common in, in terms of characteristics? Well, they're intelligent. The Border Collie is super intelligent, the most intelligent dog on the planet, according to a number of websites. But they're all herding dogs. Their function in life is constant motion. Their function in life is to herd cattle and livestock and other things. And in some cases, I have seen a, like an Australian cattle dog was surrendered to a shelter, reason the dog nipped the child. Well, also herding dogs nip at the hawks in order to keep the, you know, the cattle and the livestock going in, in one direction and keep them in line. So to me, it was, it was something that, you know, I thought, well, I bet the dog kind of a little nipped the child to keep the child in line. And if you don't understand what the function of the dog is, that's going to, that's going to contribute to the angst and the frustration and the emotional upset and distress. So these are three dogs that are great outside and great herding, great for agility, great for a family that has experience with these dogs or in that particular dog breed group, but not for first time dog owners. The second group of dogs fall into the working line guard dog group. Now, the, the first two that I'm going to mention are AKC herding groups, Belgian Malinois and German Shepherd. The second two are in the working line group, which is the Rottweiler and the Doberman Pinscher. Now, first of all, with these particular groups of dogs, you have to make the investment in training. And by investment in training, I don't mean um, Petco or PetSmart. I mean professional experienced trainers who work with working line guard dog type guarding type dogs. You know the bite force of a German Shepherd is 238 pounds per square inch. The Doberman Pinscher, the Rottweiler, and the Malinois, if you are not committed to training these dogs and know how to train them and have them under control, uh, it, you're, the financial liability could be tremendous if these dogs actually injure you, somebody or injure you or injure another pet. That's why these dogs are all, all very confident, very strong dogs, 
very intelligent dogs. The Malinois is beloved by law enforcement, like the German Shepherd, because they're high energy dogs. The other thing to consider too is, and especially with the German Shepherd, the Doberman, the Rottweiler, and the Malinois are mostly short-haired dogs. The, the Malinois has a little bit of a longer-haired coat, like it's similar to a German Shepherd, but not quite. The Shepherd is a double-coated dog. They're shedding all over, and trust me, I've got two German Shepherds, and it's it, not for the first-time dog owner. Great dogs, but again, not for the first time dog owner. Another group of dogs or dog that I'm seeing that is climbing up the list in interest for a lot of people are dogs that are in the Mastiff group. And this Mastiff group I have as, um, as a, let's say, standard bearer is the Cane Corso. The Cane Corso is the 20th most um, you know, uh, how do I want to say popular dog breed? And it's really climbed up through the years in the AKC registration group and popularity group. Um, the thing with the Mastiffs, um, like the Neapolitan, like the Bull Mastiff, the Mastiff, the Connie Corso, um, representative of the Mastiff line, is that these dogs are huge. These dogs really are large. We're talking 150 pounds, 175 pounds, if not more. And for a first time dog owner to be able to handle, <laughs> that's, those are my Bostons. They must've seen a squirrel or a coyote. But for a first time dog owner to be able to handle this size of a dog, in addition to the fact that these dogs are so large, they eat a great deal. Um, they need socialization. They do have temperaments that are great for family, but again, you've got to spend the time and the, make the investment and the emotional social commitment to these dogs to get them trained or you can run into problems. And then finally, the last group of dogs that I'm, I'm going to mention um, are the Siberian Husky, the Boxer, the Standard Poodle, and the Jack Russell. And again, what do these dogs all have in common? Again, energy level all, and mental need for mental stimulation, like my, my German Shepherd is giving, has right now. Um, let's start at the beginning. Let's start with a standard poodle. Standard poodle is right up there with the Border Collie, second in line to the amount of intelligence. But standard poodles are about 60, 70 pounds, they do need a bit of grooming. I should say they need a lot of grooming. You don't need an AKC Westminster uh, type of dog, but they do need regular clipping and grooming. Very intelligent dogs, very active, very high energy dogs, which is again a reason why I'm putting them on the list, not for the first time owner. Siberian Husky is double coated dog, high prey drive, known for being an escape artist. Um, it's a kind of a stubborn, independent type of dog. Um, it is trainable, but it's got, it's again, it's got a very high prey drive. It thinks for itself. The third dog that I mentioned was the Boxer. There are Boxers and Poodles in my neighborhood, so I'm, I'm familiar with them, and I'm familiar with some of the issues that their owners have because they're not really investing the time that's needed for these dogs. Again, mental stimulation, active, high energy. When I see people walking Poodles and Boxers down in my neighborhood, they're usually like this, hanging on for dear life because they don't have the dog necessarily under control, but that's an owner problem. And also again, they're high energy. Boing, boing, and especially, especially the boxer. I, I mean, the boxer, when my neighbor stopped to talk to me the other day, that boxer was all over. I mean, he was jumping on me, jumping on, you know, uh, just really, it, 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 I could definitely see that the owner loved the dog, but it was the dog was not get not getting the time and attention it needed to be a canine good citizen, and then finally the Jack Russell, small medium compact dog, adorable. You um, see a lot of these dogs again. They're good for agility, but at the same time, when a dog doesn't have the mental stimulation that it needs, when it gets bored, it gets into trouble. And a Jack Russell needs a zoom, 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 zoom type of dog. Again, active, high energy. I must have used that word high energy at least 15 times. But anyway, it's true. 
And so I want first time dog owners to be able to be happy with their selection, be able to be happy with the dog of their dreams. But we have to be realistic in what's right for it, a first time owner versus an experienced owner. So I hope that you found this somewhat helpful and informative. Um, I speak from experience. I'm a, I've owned multiple breeds. I've raised dogs from puppies to seniors. I've been through all kinds of behavioral training issues, you know, medical issues. So I've got the experience. So I've walked the walk so I can talk the talk. And I'd be more than happy to help you find the right dog for you and your family. And so I want to say thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Don't forget to click and subscribe and I will have videos in the future as to what's the perfect dog for you and your family. So thank you very much and bye for now.